Hey everyone, as you might know, I recently purchased myself a 3D printer and it has been working great. Uh, absolutely loving it, working on various projects and being able to rapidly prototype anything I want. But there's a problem. Usually when I start a print, I like to be in the vicinity so if something goes drastically wrong, I'll be there to stop it. This has happened a couple times in the past. However, some of these prints that I want to try are take, going to take way too long and I'm going to necessarily be away. My goal is to design a system where I can control the 3D printer from any computer anywhere in the world. So there are an infinite number of ways to solve this particular problem. I could take out some of the wires and connect to the circuit boards with my computer itself and then write a bunch of code that would be able to talk to it and then control it using that. But that's boring and too much computer work for me. So I want a more mechanical solution. As you can see, this display is controlled with this knob at the bottom. You turn it right to select things on the right and left to select things on the left. Go figure, right? And then to select anything, you just push it in. So my solution to do this when I'm not here is to use this smaller servo to rotate the knob left and right using some good old two-way tape. And the second servo will be attached somewhere on the display and then we'll be able to pull the first servo into the knob thereby selecting something. I have yet to figure out how exactly this is gonna work, but that's what design is for. And I'm sure I'll figure it out in the next step. Now, the brackets I'm gonna design for version 1.0, we're gonna come around, wrap around either side, and have a big bracket whereupon this little guy gets screwed in. So, finished printing, got this little thing, let's see how well it works. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's perfect, yes. So, how is this going to stay on? Well, let me show you. Considering the bracket, I'll have a second servo positioned at the end right here. And then with a hinge on the other side, I should be able to use the second servo as a 3D lever. Hopefully it'll have enough torque to actually push the knob in and actually select the, uh, the feature that we need. Uh, and if it doesn't, I'll have to re-engineer the bracket to do so. However, right now, this is the simplest solution. So let's try it out. Well, back to the drawing board. So, 
Now that I have the bracket all made up, what's next? Well, this thing. This is the Arduino Uno, and it is the solution to this whole operation. Now, what it does is I can send this thing commands, which would then allow it to drive both that servo and the other servo. So, all we have to do now is write the code for this thing and see how it works. Okay, 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 stop, stop. Oh, 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 no way. No way. Dang it. Ah, oh. it's not strong enough. What's going on? Nothing's... Why did it just do that? Okay, so that's pretty good. That worked. It entered something. Why, why are you stopping? Dang it. Oh, you're... You're so close. Okay, that's pretty good. That's, there we go. That's chill, that's chill. That's, okay, it hit enter, we're good on that point. But then it gets to this point where it just refuses to move. Bro, why? Bro, why? It's going the exact same direction. Why is it doing that? I need, I need a charger. Gosh darn it. Okay, so it's not, it's not, it's just weird. Why is it weird? Why are you so weird? Is there just not enough power to? Oh. Now it just refuses to move. My, my goodness, man. Let's see. Left, right, little bit left, little bit left, little bit left, just like that, yeah? Little bit right, little bit right, little bit right. Beauty. All right, down, 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 down. Click, come on. works. Woohoo! All right, all right, all right. Uh turn it on. Oh, frick. Oh, you dummy. Uh Okay, I just need to write a couple lines of code. Select angle equals 0. Select, I thought it was angle equals 180. Okay, I need to change setup, because this, this is fantastic. All right, cut. All the way to the right, so I can select info, please. There we are. Oh, it's so close, okay. 80, let's go with 80.
shite. No, eh? All right, and enter. Come on! Okay, okay. Enter strength. 120. Let's do that. Okay, that works. Enter. Woo! <laughs> yeah, baby! Oh my gosh, that was... Oh, that's so satisfying. Oh, it just barely just clicks it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, now, if does it work, uh, say if it's... Uh, okay, so let's enter there. <laughs> let's go all the way to the left. All right, let's print some. Yeah, baby. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. From my computer. Right from here. Oh, man. Okay. This print will take two days. Two days and 15 hours, I think. Which is a total of 63 hours, I think. Yeah. 63 hours. All right, that's that. So this is how the chain of command works. I have one computer or my phone anywhere in the world, and it's talking to a second computer here in this room. Now this second computer is connected to two things, the camera trained on both the 3D print and the screen and the microcontroller. From the microcontroller, we will then connect to both of the servos. Now, Using two computers is a little overkill. Uh, it's a little like using a nuke to kill a fly. It's totally, totally ridiculous. But it's all I got. And hopefully in the future, I can replace this second computer with this little special chip that connects to the Wi-Fi. Very useful. all hooked up. This obviously we've already tested. Now it's time to test the computers. So microcontroller straight to this computer which is trained right back on to the 3D printer. This isn't permanent, it's just a test, but this is the computer you want to see it used for. So if we got the connection set up I should be able to turn left. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> left and right. And now let's hit enter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Now I can take this thing wherever I want and also my phone wherever I want to control that whole setup. Just to double check that I can do this on my phone. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> wow. There's just something about controlling something in the real world with your cell phone. Oh, you can't beat that feeling. Amazing. Not bad, eh? You know, it's funny for this whole part and for the whole system that we've just made over the past couple weeks, didn't end up needing it. Uh, even though this part did eventually fail at the tail end, I was here to catch it. But it's not the point of whether or not I used it. The point is I was prepared in case of an emergency, which is what being an engineer is all about. Regardless, this was really fun. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video and let me know what you thought down in the comments below. 
I have tons more ideas of what to do with this thing in the future. Maybe adding a temperature sensor to alert my phone if something is really going wrong. Wi-Fi enabled, a uh, couple other things maybe, who knows. But regardless, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.